Hello, friends. My name is Alicia, but as always, you can call me Crafty Al. I'm excited and a little bit nervous to be here today. I do see that some of you are already over there chatting in the comments. That is awesome. I will check that every so often for questions for me or just to chat with you as we as I craft today. Um, first thing I'd like to know, are you crafting along with me? If you are over in that chat box, why don't you put a five over there so I know if you're crafting along. Now, if you are joining us for the replay, you might want to fast forward maybe five minutes. I'm going to give people some time to get in, get settled, and then we'll get started. After I do the live, I will put some chapters in to make skipping ahead a little bit easy. Um, a special shout out to my channel members. Those are going to be the people over in chat that have the little number icons next to their name. Thank you for your continued support. Um, did I already mention live chat? Make sure you're on live chat, not top chat, so you see the newest messages. Can't remember if I did that. So today what I want to do is we're going to do a little bit of a tweak on the December 2022 sheet load of cards, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to adjust it for six by sixes, six by six paper. Now, if you haven't yet already, um, went and hopped around to each of my collab team members. They all shared their videos and Instagram posts today. Make sure you do that. This is kind of a, a different sketch, and so many of them have great tips to help you put it together. They have switched it up as well, so make sure to check them out. You can either check out my video from earlier today, or I believe I do have a link to the hashtag in the description box below. Later, if I find out I don't have that, I will be sure to add it. Now, I see a lot of comments coming up. I'll kind of scan through them quickly. Ooh, so we do have some people crafting along. Excellent. Um, some people are at work. Totally understandable. That is the time of the day. Unless you're over, you know, in a different time zone, maybe across the ocean, you might be off work and enjoying your Friday evening, or perhaps you're sleeping because it's early Saturday morning. What did uh, crafting should be a joyous expression of all the money you spent? It is definitely an expensive hobby, isn't it? Yes. All right. Um, if you want to get my attention after we get started, either type my name in all caps, so Alicia or Crafty Al, or if you start typing at Call me Crafty Al. It should be able, you should be able to click on my name to highlight it, and that helps me see it. I will just make sure, real quick, that I am in the chat so you can do that. All right. And that way, yeah, you should just start being able to type at Call me Crafty Al, and it will pop up. And then I get a yellow box around my name on my end. So I know that you want to ask me something specifically. Um, there are many other awesome crafters in here. I have a couple admins. So if it's just a question anybody can answer, feel free to chat amongst yourselves. Um, I, if non non collaboration team members cuz i know you've already made yours this month but if you've already used the december 2022 sheet load let me know over in that comment section i know that i already had a subscriber who had a video up today already using it that was super quick i don't think i could do that <laughs> all right i want to go ahead and just show you my first set and then i'll talk about what i am going to use today for the alternative so here in front of me is my first set for the month. It made eight cards with two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper. And this month, if you haven't already seen it, it is a three page printable. And that third page is going to help us put our cards together. Now, in my original process video, I got some adhesive on my print. And I've already had so many great suggestions in my comment section how to fix that. So today I'm going to try one, but um, I've heard people like laminate it. I thought maybe some clear cardstock over it. So we're going to give something a try just to see if that'll help us from ruining this. I think what I'm going to do in the end, I just didn't have time today, is I will laminate this and just keep it with the printout. Yay! Gloria Jewett is my mom in chat, and she has already used the December sheet load. Excellent, excellent. All right. 
So what I wanted to do today, because Not Too Shabby came out with their newest box of the month yesterday, and I don't get to share any creations with it. Let me change my camera back up. Sorry. Get a little bit more face time before we craft. So I haven't, my video doesn't come out like until next week, but it might be one that sells out quickly. And there are so many cute elements in it that I wanted to come use it today. And I thought that because it's six by six paper, we could just tweak the sheet load a little bit to use six by six paper. And that might be something that you want to do as well. So I'll show you just quickly what's in the box. Now, if you do want to purchase it, I have a link pinned at the top of the chat box, and I also have most of the products I'm going to be using down in the description box below. If I add anything like specific ink colors, I'll add that later. I might not even get that far. I do have an alarm set for like 2 or 2.30, so hopefully we can be done by then. I know that's a long time to sit, so feel free to go get a drink, you know, come back later, see where I am at. Yes, I had thought about packaging tape as well over that. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the box of the month goodies. I'll get these laid out here. So it is kind of a winter woodland animal theme. Little, little snow critters, one of the paper pads is called. This month you get two paper pads. You have the fawns in winter and the snow critters. And then you have a package of ephemera to kind of go with each. And then there are three stamp sets that they all feature cute woodland animals. Here are some more realistic ones. And then we have two sets that they're all cozied up in their scarves or their sweaters and everything has some great coordinating sentiments. So again, if you want to check this out, you can uh, click on that link and hopefully grab yourselves one. Today, I'm going to be using the sentiments from, what's it called? The Snuggle Weather stamp set. And just so I don't have to take the time to like stamp, die cut, color my images, I'm going to be using some ephemera today for the cards that I make. And for my pattern papers, I'm going to go with this one. I love the colors in this, just kind of different for winter. <laughs> 42 Rosie, the fawns. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not quite that fawns, right? <laughs> That's cute. Let me bring in the stuff I already pre-selected. So what I'm going to do is we'll end up with three cards today. And since the back of these match the front, what we're gonna do is cut each of our pieces from it, and then we'll just flip some over for that coordinating piece of pattern paper. Um, and then I already pre-chose some of the ephemera. I tried to pick, you know, like the blue cup. We'll go with the bl the blue background, the pink over here. And then the green cup, I can't remember if there was a green cup, but there, oh, there was birds on the green cup, I think. So instead of putting birds with my bears, because, you know, that seemed kind of dangerous for the life of my birds, I went with this one since they were kind of cozied up together. I plan on making my background piece, the larger piece, this pattern, the front pattern, and then my diagonal strip will be the coordinating. I did already, oh, since I'm going to use six by six paper, I am going to change the cutting just a little bit. So if you have your printout handy and you think you might want to do this, you might want to make a note. So when I use six by six paper, instead of having the CS1 mat at four by five and a quarter, I am just going to cut my main paper at four by five and a quarter. That way I have the two inch strip left for the diagonal, which is exactly what we need. Now there will be a little bit on bottom, but you know you can always throw that scrap on the inside to decorate your card. To make sure as much of that pretty pattern paper shows as possible, to mat the diagonal strip, I went ahead and pre-cut some, it's kind of mid-weight vellum, it's 28 pound to the two and a quarter by six and a quarter, and that way it, it wouldn't cover up much of the paper, but we'll still be able to see the edge of that through the vellum. 
I'm glad you're all liking the paper. It is cute. I cannot wait next week to show you some. I'll be using um, one of the, not the stamps that we're using today, another one, and then the, the, the fawns in winter paper pad. Bring in my trim over here. Doing a little rearranging in my craft area. So I'm trying to get used to where everything is at. So there might be some banging, but don't worry. So here we're going to take our piece of four by four. Now, if your pattern paper is directional, which mine, this front one definitely is, and yes, yeah, so is the back, make sure before you make that first cut that you make sure it's going the correct way. Like if I used this to cut from, I could really cut that anyway, right? But the back has to be cut in a certain way. So definitely keep that in mind. So what we'll do here, whoops, is cut at four inches and I am gonna cut just right on the line. Sometimes I do what I call a generous cut and I will go to the right edge of the black line. But because we do need that two inches complete on the other side, I'm gonna put it right at that four. So this piece will stay as it is, but we will use this portion of it. And this four inch wide piece gets cut to five and a quarter inches tall. So originally this pattern paper was three and three quarters by five. So just a little different. And then we have this cute little piece for the inside of the card and you could use either side of that. Or, you know, if you wanted to cut it in half and make a couple flags, one of each pattern, you could do that too. So I'll just keep cutting these. This is the first time that I have done a sheet load of cards live that was not during the monthly channel member live that I do. So it is a little bit different because when I'm with my channel members, some of us are on screen. So it's not like I'm completely by myself doing a whole sheet load. But maybe if this is, if this is something you guys like, we can maybe try it more often. All right, so we have, that's how quickly we could cut all those pieces. Now we're going to mat the pattern paper, the strips with the vellum. I always do my, oh, wow. Okay, so I must not have cut these down to two and a quarter inches wide. I'm like, wow, that's a big border. Sorry, I got scraps out for this and I knew that they were at least the two and a quarter I needed. So I didn't bother to cut them down after I got them to six and a quarter. So we'll do that quickly. I was so glad that you could make it today, Brenda. Now, if you ever want to join us on the channel member lives, that is a perk for die cut and paper trimmer level members. And we do it once a month toward the end of the month. And there's usually a giveaway and it's just fun to get together and chat with some other crafty friends. Now you don't have to get on Zoom with us. You can just always kind of watch like you are here over on YouTube. You're right, Karen. If you if you do it this way, there are no scraps if you can put that one inside. The reason that I didn't make it a six by six sheet load is um, you'd have to get like one piece of paper for every card you wanted to make. So I didn't know if people would want to do that. You know, sometimes we can get, you know, four cards from two pieces or six cards from three pieces, depending on the sketch. So I just thought it would be good to just show this option for those who are interested. And 
if you're a crafter who only has six by six paper, this is an easy one to go ahead and switch up if, um, or if you want to cut down 12 by 12 and make fewer cards, you can do that too. I got a question here, Michelle, hold on. Um, you know what, Michelle, you might get to see me change my tape today. It is something that you kind of have to get used to, but I wouldn't go back after this. So I could possibly run out of adhesive today. So it might be your lucky day. I would say, though, try it again. Um, you know, you have to, you know, wrap it back around here. I'm not sure why it would keep coming off. So maybe if we have any um, anybody in the chat, if you have any pointers, if you have an ATG2, but otherwise it, I might run out so you might get to see it. Let me know in the chat if you enjoy using vellum and maybe when the last time was you used it. I usually go in spurts, like I won't use it for three months and then every card has to have some vellum on it. <laughs> yeah, Danny, I I haven't timed myself changing it, but I would say on a good day, I can probably change it in less than 20 seconds. But again, and it just takes practice. It used to, when I would run out of tape, I would like groan just thinking about how difficult it was to change. But I've done it now for, you know, probably 10 plus years. And I forgot before I bring that in, I need to cut down my strips. All right. Um, this, I have to cut two and five eighths from the bottom, which I mentioned it in today's process video. That's halfway between two and a half and two and three quarters. And that would be the edge of the vellum or the matted piece that gets set there. I did see some of my collab team members today. They switched um, which piece was at the top. I had somebody do landscape, which you know what? I just cut that at two and three eighths. But you know what? We're going to make it work. So see, it's just a little bit shorter. That's what happens when I cra try to craft and talk. All right. So yeah, some collab team members rotated it. Some just flipped. Um, some had the longer piece be up here instead of down here. Now it still had the border here, but if you would cut this and accidentally cut it two and five eighths from this edge, that just means that these, you know, this piece will be a little bit shorter, and that is completely okay. You can always make sheet load your own. Oh, hello, Cynthia. Hope you have fun when you get to sheet load. Now, because oh, since this is now the size of the original piece of pattern paper matted, we can use this same template. And you'll see here, this is going to be one of the ones that's super important that you print this at 100%. So you can just lay this right on there and it's the size that it is. Oh, Yvette, I hope your father-in-law is okay. Let's all send some good wishes to Yvette's father-in-law. So you can sit it right there. Now, what I'm gonna do, because I haven't had a chance to laminate it yet, I'm just gonna bring in, this is the clear cardstock I like to use for my clear card bases, but it is 
thinner. I usually use this for the fronts of shaker cards, but now my adhesive won't stick to my print and tear it apart. So we will flip this around like that. You want your matted edges to meet. Um, you could do it like that as well, but you might want to cover up that opening since the mats don't meet there. And now this is probably the trickiest part. Like I, it's hard for me to remember like which areas of this that I can put my adhesive on so I'm not wasting a whole lot of adhesive out here. But what I have found, oh, I lost my ATG. I do go ahead and put a strip completely down the center because that's on there. And then if you look at this, just about halfway up each of the sides. Now, one of my collab or maybe even more of uh, my collab team members today use liquid adhesive and they had that down to a science where they would put adhesive on there. It worked out so well. Um, so I might try liquid adhesive next time. So there we have that one in place. We just used a template. And now same thing on this, put a strip down the center and a little way up each side. And now that angle is just about as perfect as you can get it. I think my mom mentioned she just eyeballed it. You could definitely do that too. Now later we'll trim that off, but let's go ahead and get the rest of our diagonals put on here. <gasps> Did anybody else notice what I did? I put the blue strips on the green background, but the great thing, this not too shabby paper, it has a texture and you can just pull that right off and it like doesn't even ruin it. Now, if I would have used liquid glue and it would have dried, it might have, but you know what? That same area is going to be covered up. I need somebody right here beside me going, Alicia, what are you doing? I mean, it looked okay together, the colors, but I wanted to have the same blue here. So there we go. I'll try to get the correct one on here this time. Oh, I think I was talking. If you're interested in becoming a channel member or upgrading to join us for the monthly lives, I have a link that shows you all the perks um, down in my description box. And membership starts as low as $1.99 a month. And I, I mentioned it today in the process video, but the most favorite perk is probably the one that starts in the $1.99 a month. And that is the visual archive, which instead of going back and watching all the past sheet load of cards videos, you just have one file that you see the thumbnail of the first page and you can click on the direct link to download it. So it's kind of handy if you're finding sheet load after, you know, we've been here on YouTube a couple years. So you can just quickly find all the past ones. Oh, yes, Michelle. I saw Melissa set too. She actually shared it with me um, yesterday on Instagram, I think, in a message. Oh, they are gorgeous. So if you're on Instagram or yeah, Melissa's um, on Facebook at a lot of different places, you should go see her cards. They are very beautiful. Um, there we go. So this did, this little piece of clear plastic worked very nicely. One of mine, I did have some adhesive hanging over in just about the same spot and it just pulled right up off that plastic. So I would suggest if you have a laminator or if you have some acetate or clear cardstock to do that when you're getting ready to make yours. You could probably, maybe if you have some I wonder if you could see through parchment paper or wax paper to do that too. If you could see well enough, that might work as well. And then it definitely wouldn't stick to that. And I did mention in the process video, I need some longer handled nonstick scissors. 
Um, Cause instead of, you know, making all these little bitty cuts to cut off the excess, I could just do it in one snip. Oh, Danny, I totally, you know, now, yeah, that is, I just saw Danny's comment. That is a great idea. I was just thinking, you know, since we're moving the Lego stuff out of the basement, I was just thinking, yeah, now I can have Danny over and we can really do lives together. That, yeah, that would be nice if I could have you here. But I'm, who you know, I have all these grand plans that I'd like to have everything settled here in my craft area, you know, by the new year. But I think we know that won't happen. But hopefully soon I can have some time to put it together. My daughter, if you've been following along, you know, she got her license. Um, I had mentioned, you know, a couple of times she either had driver's ed or she was going to take her test. So she has her license now and she got her school parking pass, which let me know if anybody else's high school, you have to pay $40 to park there. But anyway, we got that and she drove herself to school for the first time yesterday and she went ahead and went today. And so I have no car to get anywhere. So... Danny might definitely have to come here a lot from now on. <laughs> I will I will still keep the car so we can do our monthly lunch, Danny. Okay, so here we have our final pieces. Now I'm just going to put them on some card fronts. Oh no. Okay, so I moved everything around and I moved my card fronts. I have to step away for just a second. All right. I'm not going to know where anything is for like six months now. So I usually just keep some heavyweight white card bases, just real handy, already cut, fold, scored and folded. And I know that I mentioned it in the process and I even had a couple collab team members mention it. But if you do not like top fold cards, you could always do a side fold. This is one of those sketches that it will not matter. Yeah, Michelle, we didn't have to pay to park either. But when I was in high school, we didn't have a very big parking lot. So we had to like park on the streets and stuff around it. But yeah, $40. And we haven't needed one the whole time because, you know, I would go pick her up. Oh, oh, you're going to get to see me change my ATG. Let me get it out before you start timing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh you are living on the wild side danny which yeah that would be great if you'd come pick me up for lunch but presley told us i don't know if it's a truth let me open this first that if you get caught parking in the parking lot without a pass that it's 70 dollars which that is hard that's hard to believe i would hope that it was maybe 30 with, you know, then your 40, your $40 parking pass, but who knows? It is kind of crazy. So I pull it long enough so I can put it, I don't know if I can zoom in on this. I pull it long enough so I can put that little tail through there. And then I pull it tight and just, you have to hold the trigger back, but then pull it around. And then you have to look, see, you have like the printed part. And then this is where you can start using your adhesive. I go just a little bit further. And then you have to remember to put this thing back on because that's what's going to keep your tape in place. And to start mine... I don't know if you have to do this, but I always break my adhesive. So I just break it so it's apart and then that's where I would start. So I hope that helped a little bit, um, but it's definitely 
definitely something you have to get used to, but I think it's worth it. Now, I do know after I have reloaded it, where it's at on the rubber roller is always a little bit different until I've used it for a while, but then it usually sets itself. Yeah, half days, you don't need a parking pass. I think that's a good idea. Adjust this just a little bit. Now, unfortunately, my card base is not like the not too shabby pattern paper. It's not as forgiving. All right. I usually try to bring the skinniest side close to me, get these three edges where they look good. And what I should have done before I pressed down the end was just lightly place it. And then when it's okay, press it the rest of the way. Yeah, Michelle, I, I would too. I would go through so many little tape runners. I think probably the liquid adhesive is probably would be a better deal than maybe all the small little tape runners, but I am just so used to this. And I get my, my adhesive rolls on framingsupplies.com. And if you buy them in bulk, it is so, I won't call it cheap, but it is super economical. I'm pretty sure that's where Danny gets hers too. I think Christy Marcott, if you follow her, I think she even has a discount code where you can save five or 10%. So that's always a bonus. Let's go ahead and put these on the inside. I also forgot. I was thinking about putting my sentiment on the front, but because my ephemera is a pretty good size, I'm actually just going to stamp the sentiments inside. So we'll do that too. Oh, Karen, thank you for the, the discount code at Tape Jungle. I bet too, hopefully she gets a, a little bit of a credit for all the people she sends there when you use that code. Amalia, I get my rolls at tapejungle.com. And then Karen just put in the discount code that Christy Marcott has. And I think it's five or 10%. Oh, Heather, yeah, you definitely want your little black piece. I wonder if you could buy a replacement. Okay, let's go ahead. Get out. our Misty, 10%. So that's nice. When I buy the rolls from Tape Jungle, I get the box that I think is 144. And I think it, I don't know, Danny, if you know, like it might be a dollar something a roll at that point. It is just a great deal. So, oh, I should probably figure out, I'm going to put these over here so I know which ephemera goes on the front because I want to use one sentiment for these two and then a different one for the sleigh. Oh, free, yes, and free shipping. All right, so for this, I thought they kind of look like, the, especially this pink one looks like they're kind of chilling out. So I'm gonna do, let's chill. Does anybody else find that like the stamps just want to stick to your fingers? They won't, it won't go away. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let me see. Ah, uh, Kathy Zilski usually does like with a eraser on a pencil tip, like puts it in place, but I don't have any pencils with erasers apparently. Yes, the ephemera are so cute. All right. And since these are kind of a more muted tone, I don't want to do 
black for my text, but I don't want to have to worry about matching an ink to each of these. So I'm going to go just a little bit lighter. These are my Gina K ink cubes. I'm going to go Moonlit Fog. Oh, Michelle, that's a good idea to use your powder tool. I ended up, I just put kind of my fingers on the back and just kind of rub some of it off. Hello, Jamie. Jamie from Not Too Shabby is here. Everybody is loving the papers and the ephemera. I can't wait to share more about the stamp sets next week. So now I'll stamp it once. And I always forget when I use black ink, I'm like, oh, that's kind of light. Let's stamp it again. But it's gray. That's why it looks light. And let's see, my blue one is going to have the same sentiment. I was watching. Cool. Gina is always full of ideas. Now, normally you would see me use my pressure tool that my sister made me, but with sentiments, I don't like to do that because sometimes it presses them too hard. There we go. And finally, we're going to switch out our sentiment for this one. So I'm going to I'm going to try to be a good steward of my stamps like Danny, and I'm going to wash this off right away. And for the third one, I just thought since those two were little friends together there on the sleigh, I'm going to use a friendly hello. And I could probably be better about centering this and making sure it's straight. But we're on live, so I hope you'll forgive me. I am going to ink this one up a second time. Sometimes when you have new stamps, you just need to ink them up and use them a few times. And if I was using my pressure tool, it might have gotten it a little bit darker there in the center. There we go. Now, before I put the ephemera on the front, I am going to go ahead and stamp my information on the back, which I get a lot of questions on it. So I wanted, I thought I'd talk about it a little bit while I stamp it. So I got my personalized stamp, which this is what it looks like. I did design this myself and I actually designed it in a four by four inch square and they are clear cling. And I cut them out. So I actually designed four stamps in that area. So I have my one for the back of my card. I have an address. I have a big logo and a little logo. This whole four by four shipped to me here in the United States was less than like $13. Now that might have changed a little bit, you know, with everything, the price is increasing, but it was definitely worth it. If you can design your own artwork, I would highly suggest I sent my artwork to rubberstamps.com. And then you'll see here that after I got the four by four stamp, I cut it down into four individual stamps so I can just use which area I need. This is one of those times where I wish when I bought my Gina K inks, I didn't get the neutrals like the grays and the browns and the big ink pads. This is one of those times where I wish I had that because this is going to take a little extra inking to get this all covered.
Let me know in chat if you have a personalized stamp you use on your card backs, and if so, where you ordered or got yours from. I do make sure to open my card up before I stamp just because this has some uneven edges on it that it might not stamp completely if you don't do that. Tailored Expressions does have some cute ones, Mary. I have been tempted many, many times. But I guess even though I spend like all of my fun money on crafting stuff, I do try to be a little bit frugal where I can. I have, yeah, I've seen Bossy Jossy too. Awesome, Michelle, that you get getting a new one. Very cool. Awesome. I like that so many of you have something. Sounds like there's a lot of different places out there to get them. I am not affiliated with rubberstamps.com, but when I am done, I'll try to remember to put a link to the four by four stamp that I bought. And then you could always um, figure out how much it would cost to ship to you. If you can do artwork or if you know somebody, you know, friends, family that can do it too. Awesome. Yeah, I think I I do love your stamp, Danny, but I have to I have to go with my my 13 stamps, my four stamps for $13. But yours is neat. And I'm sure with it being that real, you know, rubber on wood, it stamps so nicely. All right. Now we're gonna pop these up. And <laughs> I, some of you have been around here longer, so you know about my big, my big blue rolls of foam tape, but this is how I buy my foam tape rolls. And this is about the original size. It was a little bit bigger, but I get this off Amazon. I have it in a quarter, three eighths, and then a half inch rolls. But you can see here, the half inch has just been a little bit more loved. I've used more of this. And actually, maybe this is, hold on, this might be three quarters. Yeah, this is three quarters. And I knew that. So I'm just going to put some of this on the back of each of my ephemeras. That's a good idea, Michelle, to design it on Canva. Yeah, I know a lot of people use that and they probably have the correct, um, that you can probably save it in the correct format that you would need to. Great idea. Okay, so I do have my littler roll. I'm almost ready to run out. Now, this one I didn't put the date on, but the next one I open, I'm going to put the date on so I know um, how long it took me to use it. Because I'm betting I've had this for like two to three years, but I want to put just a little bit right there. Yeah, what I don't, I love the red rubber for like, it It does, it seems to be a more like um, consistent stamp, but you can't see through it. And I don't know how we stamped before clear stamps where you could actually see where it goes. Um, Michelle, normally you don't have to have a printer for sheet load, but this month, if you want to use that template, 
you real that's the one that it's really handy but if you go check out mint twist cards she's on my collab team and she actually showed today um how she did it on like her grid mat how you can get this in the right place without having that print out so i would highly suggest going to watch that so here we go. Later, I will probably add some gems, like maybe in that kind of limey green to bring that color out. And I might switch it for each card. But these were so quick. And the ephemera makes it so easy and adorable. Yeah, if I'm going to use wood stamps, I have to just cut it out later. Like I could never get anything straight anymore with those. Awesome, Natalie, then you're all ready to go if you can't print it out either. That was a great tip that she did. I will probably make a video later this month sharing that tip too, just so others can see it in case they miss that one. Yvette, I will link the foam tape when I am done. I do not think it's in the description box right now, but I will definitely link it, yes. And again, because it's kind of that coating, I'm going to just bring this down a little bit lower. I would just, I wanted to see more of this strip, this bottom diagonal strip. Oh, thank you for saying hi, Leslie, and joining us the whole time. I understand not everybody likes to chat along, but we do always love it. But we appreciate our silent watchers as well. Oh, Danny, please do help us help us figure out how to use the rubber, the wood rubber stamps. All right, guys, so there we have three quick and easy cards. Again, that is using part of the new Not Too Shabby Box of the Month, which if you got here a little bit late, when the replay goes live, you can go back and check it out. But I'll show you quickly, maybe, the parts that I use from it. So I use the Snow Critters paper. I use some of the ephemera from the matching little package there and the sentiments from the Snuggle Weather stamp set, which I am loving. I, I do have to show the stamps again. So they all have these cute little woodland creatures on the left, kind of more realistic, you know. And I would say these animals kind of look realistic, but they're wearing sweaters and scarves. I just love it. So you can find this box of the month linked in the description box or at the um, comment pinned at the very top of the chat. Since I won't be here to officially share my card because there'll be another hop next week, I wanted to share it today. Speaking of hops, in the description box below, I do have the hashtag for the current not too shabby hop that is going on. Some of the design team shared their creations yesterday and you can hop along up until the 7th, I think, and be entered to win a $25 gift card to the not too shabby online store. And then next week on the 7th, the other half of the design team will be sharing creations and there will be another hop with another chance to win a giveaway. So make sure you check that out. If you can't find the hashtag below, you can always go to the Not Too Shabby channel um, and then look for those videos. But definitely, definitely want to check it out here. And again, this was pretty much no scrap since I put the scrap inside. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'm going to take a drink before I change my camera up. And then we'll probably start to end the live. But let me know if you have any questions. Hello, if you haven't seen me yet. 
I, oh, if you, if you don't follow me on Instagram. So last week I got to revisit Scrap Mania, which is in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. If you are traveling through there or anywhere close, like this summer, Danny and I drove four and a half hours just to go there. But I happened to be in the Cedar Rapids area for Thanksgiving. So it was only 30 minutes away. I definitely had to go. It is totally worth the trip. It's it's like a, a target for paper crafters. It's amazing. But I thought today I would just do a little shout out here with my t-shirt. Um, so after this, I will put my foam tape. I will put the rubberstamps.com link. And um, I'll link to what I get on Tape Jungle for my ATG if you want to check it out. And I'll try to remember to put Christy's code there so you can try to save a little bit of money. I know that after the new year, I'm going to have to buy a box. So I'm going to be getting 144 rolls. I will be adhering for days. Good, good, good. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how to use the 6 by 6 paper. Um, I thought it was pretty darn handy. Perfect that if you cut that background just a little bit bigger, then you use up all of your paper. So I hope that the rest of you have a very crafty day or evening or Saturday, depending where you're watching from. And uh, thank you so much for being here. I hope you all have a crafty day. Bye-bye, guys.